Hello and good morning, family. Happy Friday, TGIF. It is August the 30th, 2024. We are almost out of August. Can you believe it? All right. So yesterday we were dancing. Let's see what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to start with Kuan Yin. And apparently we're still dancing. All right. Blossoms of the Sky Dancer. This is number three. Okay, let's see what it says. Kuan Yin dances creative energy and light across the sky, causing blossoms to descend. In the same way, we tap into our spiritual power of creation. We cause our life and all of life around us to bloom. Creation is a natural spiritual power within you. Force can slow down the process. It is time to stop striving and to allow your manifestation to occur. Trust, let go, and allow your creation to flow. Basically, don't force it. We are doing the work, but don't force it. It has to go at your individual personal speed. Okay? All right. Earth magic today. Let's see. Autumnal. Autumn, autumn equinox. Autumn mole. Okay. This is about release. Now, this is a season that's coming up for us. Autumn is about change. Let's see what it says. All right. In many areas of the world, deciduous trees prepare for the winter and conserve their energy by contracting their life force. That is, they release their leaves, which have required the rays of the sun and nourishment from the earth in order to maintain robust growth and appearance. It's not a decision the trees make, at least not in the usual sense. Instead, it's a natural response to the decreasing cycle of light that sets up the gradual and steady release of the tree's leaves. How remarkable it is that these trees, and for that matter all of Earth Mother's children, simply know what to do with the changes in climate. Although this seasonal shift appears to be the death of sorts, it's only a preparation for the next cycle of life. One that will naturally follow the more extreme contraction of winter as an aspect of the life-death-rebirth cycle that we find represented in so many different ways. So now's the time to let anything in your life fall away that is no longer useful or needed for the emerging expression of who you are. Allow yourself to gradually shed what has become burdensome and no longer congruent with your soul's purpose. Conserve your energy by allowing yourself more rest while at the same time making preparations for the winter season. Look especially at your material possessions. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we're releasing the old, allowing the new. We have to make room. So... As we shift into a new cycle in our life, are you releasing? Are you purging? Are you uh, decluttering in any sense? It could be physical, spiritual, emotional, any of these senses. Are you releasing things? Lantern Oracle today, 26. It's about forgiveness. Hurt blocks our light. And that is very true. Yeshua has taught us that. Okay. All right, let's see. The only forgiveness that we can receive is that which you experience for ourselves. In essence, to forgive another, life or the world is as irrelevant as being forgiven by another life or the world. If we have not forgiven ourselves, we can neither receive forgiveness nor have it to give Forgiveness is a word that often evokes in us a sense of defensiveness and anger. Why should we be the ones to forgive when we're the ones wronged? When exploring the concept of forgiveness, the key lies in the word wrong and not in the doing or the doer of the wrong. Every happening is neutral in and of itself and as an indifferent as nature. It is us who bring such notions of wrong, right, good, and bad to stimuli. 
for the wrong not to continue to be a reality that lives harmfully in our mind, body, and emotions, the physical effects of it need to be thoroughly released. The beginning of everything true and the end of everything false starts with the movement we forgive ourselves. Starts the moment we forgive ourselves for having forgotten that we are not our bodies, our behavior, our memories, or the stories that we live out, nor are we in any way how we have ever been mistreated or disrespected. We are not the wrongs done to us or that we may have done to others, nor are we made broken, defective, or less than less from them. There is nothing to be fixed or added to. You are, however, always required to release anything that is unforgiven within you so that the loving white light that you are can transparently shine in all of its brilliance. Forgiveness is your way home. You are the only light that you need. Feel your way home to spirit self by replacing all that hurts with the shining white light of pure self-love that you are. When we forget the loving light that we are, we are susceptible to believing in what we are not. Any external hurts that show up are means through which to recognize what still needs releasing. What do you need to release today? What do you need to forgive? Start within. All right. Whatever that is, very personal. You got to make room for the good stuff. All right, so Whispers of Healing, number five again. Okay, nope, that was a three. All right, this is number five, and it is about release. Okay, so we found our theme today. All right, when you're surrounded by negativity, it is important to find ways of releasing it. You may not comprehend the huge effect this energy has on how you're feeling. One immediate way to release unwanted energy is to imagine it being washed away as water runs over your hands. Running water clears and transforms your energy. Another approach for clearing unwelcome energy is to take a sea salt bath or to use paste of sea salt and water as a scrub in the shower. You can also burn sage for a few minutes and feel it lift away the low energy. Salt can draw out impurities and toxins, that may be stored within your body. Toxins in your body can come from physical and emotional influences. Poor diet, exposure to pollutants, and emotional residue from disagreements or everyday stress can contribute to the buildup of toxins. The source of the toxins is irrelevant. The important thing is releasing and clearing away the unwanted energy. Take steps to clear yourself and your energy as you feel is necessary. You know, sometimes we focus so much on the physical and detoxing and cleansing, but we, and that's important, but that's, that's a, um, a body's way. That's a 3d meat sack trying to survive in this world. Why don't we spend just as much focus on releasing and cleansing out toxins that are spiritually and emotional when those are the things that bring on stress and stress hurts the body physically. So why don't we get to the root to the cause? We're just adding band-aids. If you can take care of your physical body, why don't you take care of your emotional and spiritual body? Just a question. All right. Uh, Beyond Lemuria today is number 48, and it's about surrendering. All right. What are we surrendering? All right. So... Surrendering can be one of the hardest things to do. Trusting that we can achieve more by loosening our control can take great courage. (laughs) Takes a lot of work, too, if you're a control freak, right? Sometimes the most constructive way forward is to stop forcing things into being. Rather than allowing, inviting, and drawing a project into being, the energy here is of frustration, as if you're pushing something heavy up a mountain. At these times, gravity or flow doesn't seem to be on your side. Use this awareness as a guide when you start to detour from your path. When control is released, so too is resistance. One of the biggest skills we can learn is to get out of our own way. When we are in receptive place, we are open to a world of opportunities and the great mysteries can unveil themselves. 
The mind loves to control the outcome. But this only creates limitations. It can feel scary, but when we allow ourselves to be caught by the universe, there's a myriad of possibilities open to us. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We need to, we are putting ourselves inside a box when we do not release control. That means you are putting limitations on yourself when you don't just release the divine creator and say, okay, do your thing. You have to be open to it. So loosen your hold on all the reins. You know, you got to know that God will catch you. You got to trust, have faith. You know, things may not turn out exactly as you thought, but stay aligned with your purpose. Stay aligned with the divine creator. And then you watch what God can do. All right. So your shadow work today, betrayal. Well, that fits right in there. If someone has betrayed you, have you forgiven? Have you released it? Well, maybe you've betrayed somebody else. But this is healing begins with acceptance and forgiveness. All right. This is deception. Treachery. What is this last one? I can't even see that. Backstabbing. Very dark print here. Backstabbing. So if somebody's hurt you, ask yourself, have you released it? Most of the time, the reason that this builds up as shadow work is because we release maybe 90% of it. I'm like, well, I'll hold on to that because I don't really feel it's resolved. Why? Why are you holding on to it? It's just like we talk about women and their foul cabinet of memories and we throw it back in people's faces all the time. Yeah, because we have great memories like elephants. And you'll see that's our spirit animal today. Why are you hanging on to it? Because you want to use it as a control. And that way you can, um, I guess you could say, if you want to control the situation, and if, if you're throwing something back in somebody's face, it's only going to hurt you in the long run. You're hurting the person that you're talking to. And, well, I remember on a Tuesday two years ago, you did this. Why do you still have that in your memory bank? Because you want to control the situation. Mm-hmm. All right, let's look at our inner child today. What's he doing? He's trying to build a birdhouse, and he has more Band-Aids. Well, that fits. Then, uh... And it may look a little lopsided. That's okay. Number 18, live and learn. Well, yeah, the first time that you build something, construct something, experience something, you're going to make mistakes. Because guess what? Newsflash, you're a human. Live and learn. But we learn from our mistakes. At least I hope we are. I am patient with myself and energized by learning. So if there's a next time that something's going to happen... You learn from it. Yep. All right. Here's your spirit animal today. Like we said, number 25, it's the elephant spirit. Learn from the past. Elephants have excellent memory. If you're going to hold on to something, at least you learn from it. Don't use it as a weapon. If you're weaponizing someone's betrayal to control the situation, you're not learning anything. All right, whatever the past is, release it, let it go. Although we often wish we could leave the past behind, elephant spirit reminds us that memory matters. We must respect the wisdom of the elders who have handed down us traditions that they have shaped to express our connection to each other and respect for the community. What has come before informs that we are experiencing today, and we must never forget our legacy of strength and dignity. Elephant spirit appears with the message that we are to acknowledge that which came before and learn from it. 
All of us are memory-based creatures, and we must revisit the past to understand where we are and where we're going. The stories of events you experienced, the stories in our collective memory and the stories of relationships you have had can be told in many ways. What story will you tell? Elephant Spirit is here to encourage you to make it one that stirs in your sense of power and dignity, for you have honored yourself by choosing to learn from your past. Spirit rejoices at your willingness to learn and grow. It's okay to remember things, but can we remember the good things? Not weaponizing bad memories? Because if you weaponize something and you're remembering all the stuff, you haven't released it. Okay? You know, there's an old phrase, I, I can forgive you, but I can't forget. Well, that's true on a surface level, but a true release is true forgiveness, and you never bring it up again. Okay. All right. Your last card today from tarot is the eight of wands. This is a fire sign. It's an action sign. This is a fast moving card. Everything is in alignment and moving forward. It's already in the process. Are you today in the process of releasing all that stuff? It's appropriate. When I pulled this card this morning, I'm like, how does that fit in? And then it dawned on me because this is a forward motion. I'm not moving backwards. I'm moving forward. I'm taking the steps that I need, taking the action that I need to move forward and get aligned and get balanced. All right, release it, let it go. And don't start singing that song from the movie Frozen. It'll activate the grandchildren. All right, guys, that is your message for today. We'll see you on the round table later. Uh, snacks are required. Pants or not. There you go. Pants free Friday. Laugh a little, dance a little, have a little fun. And if you don't like that show, King of Wands, close your eyes. All right, guys, have a blessed day. I am taking Monday off because it is Labor Day. Lee has the day off, so I'm going to as well. And everybody check out the community page as a uh, reminder, tarot classes will start October the 1st. And I need your email if you want to participate. All right. You guys have a blessed day. Have a blessed weekend. Enjoy your holiday. I will see you on the show. Remember, God loves you. And so do I.